guys doing today? Doing great. Oh, it's good to meet you, John. Doing nice, good, John. Nice to meet you both as well. So today we're going to be talking about the um series Unsinkable that is created uh by by both of you. Is that correct? That's right. It's amazing. So I gotta say, um, very interesting take on how on making an audio film. It's usually a lot of people, I imagine that they're used to, you know, audiobooks because audiobooks, when they um uh they bring like certain life to the book when it's being narrated by somebody. But what inspired you both to instead of making let's say a tv series or an actual full-length feature film what inspired you guys to go ahead and go through this route and make an audio movie well uh, I'll, I'll pick this one up if you like uh, misha um it started with a film script that i wrote uh, i wrote the film script some 10 11 years ago uh, to tell the story i felt it was time the story could really be told brilliantly on screen i wrote a i then wrote a tv series version but we met in January of 2020 with uh, a guy who ended, ended up becoming a, a co-producer of ours called Jack Bowman, who was over from London and who is big in the audio world of making audio plays and, uh, and, and shows. And he talked to us about the uh, possibility of making Unsinkable as an audio movie. And we went, what's an audio movie? And, uh, and he said, well, it's like an, uh, being in a movie house, but with your eyes shut, you know, with, with, with movie quality sound. And we thought that sounded really interesting. Okay. So that's where we started. And then I spent months working with these guys, but rewriting the script for the ears only, taking the whole script and turning it into the 11 episodes we now have. Um, and then we went out to, to make it. And uh, Misha's the, the genius behind that, more of that side of it. So... Uh, I uh, thought uh, hey, he can pick it up from there. Well, we had so certainly had some help along the way, but we were, like, as John said, it, it was derived from his ori original screenplay. It was actually a feature film screenplay. And then we realized, listen, to pull something off like this, we'd need to bring in a, a team. And so uh, this being a World War II piece, we figured that uh, the team that had, uh, had a big hand in uh, HBO's Band of Brothers, the sound design team there, would would likely have some good World War II sound effects. And sure enough, we go out to, uh, to somebody called Jimmy Boyle, who's based over in the UK, and he had a team over there. And uh, we brought them on board for, for the sound design. And it really helped us construct just some very deep and uh, very realistic worlds. The specificity of the types of sounds they had, if we needed a specific engine, if it was a Rolls-Royce Maryland engine from that era, he had it, sure enough. And on top of that, you know, you want to add depth in the layers with the... And uh, with the composition, uh, Stephen Endelman, who's actually a friend of, uh, of John's, uh, another Brit in LA, uh, he uh, is a very fine composer. We worked with him uh, on the uh, on the score, uh, which is a full orchestral score. Every single layer is, uh, is instrumented out. I mean, this thing, by the time you add up all of the tracks in there, it goes hundreds of tracks deep. And uh, we, uh, we then went through a final mixing stage uh, in uh, Dolby Atmos as well with Ben Wilkins, who you might know from uh, from Whiplash. He, uh, he won the Academy Award for mixing that. And in terms of the of the cast, we just decided to aim to the top. We aimed for the top. It was uh, the summer of 2020. The world was in lockdown. A lot of people were sitting at home not wanting to do anything, but quite a lot of people were sitting at home wanting to do stuff. Mm. And we just put our casting list together and aimed high. And... We were lucky enough to get Brian Cox first. He came on board, uh, and once he came on board, then John Malkovich, um, and then Thomas Brody Sangster and uh, Natalie Emanuel and Harry Hamlin. We have a cast of 37 actors doing over 100 roles here. And everyone was recorded individually, COVID safe, in, a, you know, in an audio studio behind the glass with engineers on the other side of the glass. And we were directing them via Zoom. And that's why I think we managed to get the cast we did. It was also something that attracted them. They loved the story. They loved the writing, I'm glad to say. And they were inspired by it. Where where did the inspiration uh, come from for this story? Being the fact that I uh, I have seen a, a roulette of a lot of films going, uh, films, movies, and touching bases on on moments in history uh so what inspired you both to to bring this story to flourishing 
Well, I used to be uh, in the merchant navy, the merchant marine, you'd say over here. I was a deck officer, qualified as a ship's captain. I was at sea for 13 years, initially on tankers. And so I knew the story of the San Demetrio. It was, it's kind of up in our, in our history, particularly as a Brit and as a, as a British sailor. And there was a film made in 1943 of it called San Demetrio London, black and white film, and it was fine. But obviously it had its limitations of the day. It was pretty much a, you know, a, a rah-rah from the Merchant Navy, support the Merchant Navy in wartime. And obviously the special effects weren't great. Um, but that, by the, when I first started to write the, the movie version, I felt that we had, reached a, we, we had reached a point where we could make it look amazing. And what we ended up was making it sound amazing without looking at it at all. It was one of those uh, lucky things, like you said, that came out of COVID. This would, would likely not have been done as an audio uh, had it not been for that, uh, for that pandemic. And, uh, you know, what came out of it, we think, was, uh, was an exploration. We're really glad we took in these. Besides, besides COVID being the uh, the main, I would say the main topic on on how this was created, and mm -hmm. were there any challenges behind behind recording? Because I know that in this case, we don't, you don't, you don't get to see. I imagine that the actors, everybody was like in, like you mentioned, in individual uh, scheduling. But were there any challenges throughout the production process? Yes. So, in short, what, what we um, what we ended up doing is we utilized some technology called Source Connect, right? Like a lot of audio engineers are, uh, are familiar with that, but for those that aren't, it's uh, it's a piece of uh, software that's available online that you essentially get a high. Uh, high fidelity quality sound at a constant bit rate coming down, which makes it sound like you're really on the other side of the glass in the recording studio, right? So we're there, uh, you know, in some cases, thousands of miles away from these, perform uh, these performers, but being able to hear all sorts of intonation going on in the performance, which just really allowed us to direct very specifically. You know, couple that with, uh, with, uh, with uh, some of the actors as well. We had film crews out there as well, so that that as well is going on simultaneously. So we can we we can interact pretty well on top of the Zoom feed too. Now I think uh, John had mentioned or I had that uh, we did this animation style. So every actor, barring barring really one, but that was the exception, was individually doing this. There was no interaction between those uh, those actors during those scenes. And so what was really important is we made sure we had a very clear vision of what those scenes were going to be like in terms of the energy that needed to come from one actor to another. Otherwise, when you get in the edit, you're in, you're, you're in big trouble. And so uh, fortunately, uh, I think uh, we we both knew, you know, the story and uh, the intentions that we had had with that. So we were able to give very uh, specific direction. And uh, then it was uh, actually Helen Quigley's job back in the UK to uh, do an initial pass for that, we are incredibly grateful. There were just hundreds, if not thousands of uh, of tracks and, uh, and and takes at that point to piece back together into this giant jigsaw puzzle. Yeah, we cast the people in the States pretty much, uh, but it was uh, Helen and her partner, Andrew Mark Sewell of B7 Media, who did a lot of the casting for us in the UK. We auditioned a lot of people, a lot of people that weren't quite right or didn't have, uh, maybe didn't have the audio equipment if they were recording at home or couldn't get to a studio or worried about it. Mm. So we ended up with, with all these actors. Um, and we also had to make sure that every actor had an individual voice that they didn't, that you knew who they were at any time. So, you know, one of the great joys of having someone like Brian Cox or John Malkovich is, you know, their voices. So when they're talking, mm. you know where you are, you don't have to sort of, you know, explain it. And our aim was, which we achieved, was to have no narration in this at all. There's nobody saying, and then they went to, or anything like that. You are you are flowed through the story by the sound, by the music, by the people, and by the story itself. That yeah, I, I did notice that 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 flow on on the episodes. And it's it's so masterful what you can do with technology nowadays you guys brought in something that I would say that it's innovative because now you, you both open the door that if somebody does not have, let's say the opportunity to make it a full length feature film or TV series, they have the opportunity to do uh, audio now and it brings a new, 
uh, a new way to see uh, or not to see to hear film, right? Is... That's right. That's right. Yeah. I mean, we obviously we didn't have the funds to make an expensive TV series or movie. This would be a huge, uh, you know, a huge uh, budget operation. But by doing it in the sound, by doing it in sound studios with people just doing a day's work at a time. Um, you know, we were able to we were able to pull it off. Um, and, you know, when we talked to the actors, I mean, we asked Brian Cox what attracted him to to the script and so forth. Well, he was kind enough to say he absolutely loved the script and was fascinated by the story. And it's a casting that he doesn't often get to play. But also he said, well, my first nine years of my professional career as an actor was doing radio plays. I love the medium. You don't have to worry about makeup or green screen screens or sitting around or lighting. You just come in and create the character and live it and breathe it and do it. Yeah, absolutely. In addition to that, I think it's a great way to to build IP for anybody out there. Mm -hmm. If that's, if that's uh, you know, you have, whether it's a script or, a, or even a TV series or anything that you know, you want to be able to develop, but maybe you haven't raised the financing yet for whether that's your feature or, you know, going pitch for the network. You know, there's, there are maybe many different ways of, of trying out proof of concepts in the past, right? Sometimes there's those actors short, sometimes there's actors sizzles, but sometimes, you know, it's difficult to obviously not only monetize those, but uh, to, to really get any uh, sustainable viewership for that and build that in a, uh, in a way that, um, you know, can spread. And so, uh, wh whether this is a continuous endeavor or not, or whether we go back to, uh, to, to making uh, uh, feature films as a, as a constant thing, uh, we'll see. How are you going to be working in regards to the releases of the episodes? Are they going to be available all at once, or are you going to test out the waters of doing it like, like in TV, that it's, um, that it's uh, every week, it's there's one new episode coming out. So our partners at uh, Amazon's uh, Wondery uh, have uh, an exclusive window on this for 90 days, and uh, they will be releasing exclusively through Wondery Plus. Uh, through Wondery Plus itself, uh, it'll also be available then through Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and uh, actually the first uh, two episodes, which are combined, will be available through uh, YouTube as a as a release to everybody before uh, uh, before the uh, the remainder of the episodes is then behind the uh, the Wondery Plus uh, app and uh, and Wondery Plus paywall. Okay, that's amazing. Are you still both of you open to um, if the people catch on to this to this uh, experience? Um, are you guys open up to probably if somebody wants to continue this to make it a series or or a full length film? Yes, yes, of course, we'd love that to happen. That's our, our you know, that's our long term aim and and belief in this story is that it is a story that will be amazing on screen. Uh, we think we've done a fantastic job in the in the sound sphere, but uh, obviously it's a story that would be absolutely brilliant to bring to life on screen. Yeah, absolutely. Just uh, following on, we uh, this was initially written and developed as a as a feature film script. That that was what was was going to be spent uh, the time doing certainly a detour with with uh, with James scripts and to then move that into you know bringing a talent, bringing on you know finance partners and uh, and go and uh, make that feature film. The endeavor of doing this as a TV series, of course, have been known to. Uh, yeah, you know, to, to to take on a lot, but I wasn't crazy enough to take on uh, independently uh, putting that together as a TV show. So at that point, you know, the the idea of bringing in a, a network or a studio partner, a streaming partner, uh, is is absolutely something that would uh, would love to uh, would love to look at. And those uh, scripts and those teleplays, as it were, uh, have already been written. And, uh, and developed. In fact, what we found is during the uh, the audio process of this. As we were digging more into the drama, we were digging more into the stories, you know, the uh, the development process continued for the TV side as well. We started to learn more things, and so it was just a it's a constant evolving thing of hopefully uh, making the uh, the world and the show better. Is there by any chance, um, while you guys were uh, recording and or editing uh, the audio, or when you guys were there? Are there any memories um, that you guys keep in mind whenever you look back of when everything started on production? Oh, my word, yes. There were so many fabulous moments that the actors brought. 
Um, obviously, we were really nervous. Our, our first big star to come in was Brian Cox, and we were literally on Zoom with the, he, he, near. We found a studio near his uh, a COVID safe audio studio near his home in Massachusetts. Uh, we were on Zoom with the with the engineers and getting the camera guys there to do some behind the scenes stuff. And it's like we can't believe he's going to come. And of course, he just walks in and was charming, just charming, and so good, so good. And as an example of what we, you know, he went into his booth once we started recording, there was a big bit of wood in there, like a big bit of plywood. And he kept moving it around and we were going sort of, is that in your way? Do you want it taken out? And he said, no, 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 that's fine. Um, and we didn't realize what he was doing until we got to almost the end. I think that almost the last episode, episode 10, and he's on a train, he's on a train and a couple of the women come on, on and he lifts one of their suitcases up onto the rack. And he used that bit of wood to do it, to give the physical effort and to make it sound real. And we were going, oh, that's why he's doing it. He knew he was going to need that 10 episodes in. It was Amazing. just such a great bit of professional, professional work. How about, how about you? Do you have any other fond memory? Oh my gosh, there were there were many a memory on this. I'm uh, I'm failing to think of anything specific at this point. John and I were uh, spent a lot of time in very very confined areas. In fact, we managed to uh, to not wring each other's necks after you know probably nigh on more than a hundred days in uh, in very close proximity together is is, is amazing. Uh, we actually had just such a smooth relationship throughout this whole endeavor, and it's been it's been a long one uh, from uh, since that was initially those initial scripts were developed. It's where we're at now. Um, come back to me on that. I'll uh, I'll, uh, I'll I'll throw you a specific one. Where you <laughs> there was a there was a great relationship between Rupert Van Sittart and uh, Juliet Aubrey, who actually play husband and wife in the film. And these are two very well known actors in the UK. I and mean, Juliet Aubrey has won a BAFTA, and Rupert Van Sittart was in you know Game of Thrones, and they've done, done amazing work. And they were the only two we had in the studio at the same time. It was a big studio, and they could have a pane of glass between them, so it was COVID safe. But yeah. husband and wife, they just they just got it. And they and I have to tell you, of all our actors, I think Rupert was our favorite. He everybody sort of thinks of him as a sort of bluff, you know, guy who's not got much depth in. He's an astonishing actor, and his performance just blew us away every moment, didn't it, didn't it, Misha? He's yeah, he's absolutely fantastic. I don't, want, I don't want to name favorites. We love all our cast, of course. <laughs> we love all our cast, but you know, but, sometimes you come away from it. Rupert it was 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 particularly excellent in this role. And uh, I think I'm trying to remember what he said when he came. It's like balding, pompous, can't think why you thought of me. And he just came in <laughs> and just crushed it down to a T. There, there, there's just there's so much depth in his performance. There's so much heart. There's so much show. Uh, the comedy in moments as well, to be able to sort of uh, play in some, some instances the fool, which, you know, Morris does have to take on his chin sometimes. It takes uh, it takes a lot of um, intelligence and a lot of uh, comic wit about him too. And he really mm. has just skills at the highest level. Yeah. That's amazing. This would be my final question for both of you today. Um, if you could describe unsinkable with one word, what would it be? <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> epic yeah epic i think is it yeah i i completely agree i completely agree so like that. uh john misha thank you very much for giving us the time to talk about uh unsinkable i'm super excited for everybody that uh gets to listen to it uh it's a very grateful amazing experience and i hope that uh next time we sit here it's because we're talking about uh, the film or the series. That would be great. Real pleasure. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, John. Thank you very much. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, John.